Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for TubeTape.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at doing some color keying to create a scene like this. Okay, so here in After Effects, I have some raw footage of Tino running from uh, a fake explosion, and uh, we're going to be keying that out and replacing it with this alley background. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll go ahead and take our footage, drop it onto this new comp button, and a new comp gets created with all of the same settings as our raw footage. Now I'm also going to take our background layer and bring that to the bottom beneath our raw footage. Then we'll select our raw footage, we'll choose Effect, Keying, Key Light. Now this is the effect we're going to be using to get rid of the green background. Now you'll notice it's not perfectly lit, it's kind of got some bright spots and some shadow area, but that's okay. What we're going to do is use the screen color, click on this little eyedropper and we're just going to click in here. And that will get rid of most of the green. Now what we can do is we can turn up the screen gain which will increase the intensity of the removal. So we turn that up and then we get rid of a lot more of the spill. So I also want to play around with some of the settings as we look at the footage. So right here we have a lot of motion blur and we can see that it's a little bit green right here. So we can take the screen balance and just start tweaking it until it kind of goes away. Now the thing about screen balance is that these settings are all based on other settings. So if you change something, you may have to come back and change something else. So it's kind of a give and take process. Now the main controls that we're going to be focusing on are in the screen matte control. So if we bring that up, then we have a few other settings here. So I'll disable our background and uh, we'll zoom in here. There's also a switch here that allows you to toggle the transparency so we can actually see what everything is looking like. So right here we can kind of see some spots and some holes. So we'll try to fill those up in the next few steps. So the first thing we'll do is we'll change the clip white amount. And what that does is fills in the darker areas. But I also want to go ahead and turn the screen blur to about one. And what that does is allows the edges to look a little bit smoother. So if we shut that off to zero, you can see it's a little bit harsh and if we turn that just to about one, it smooths it out a little bit. Now we can also turn up the shrink amount, which will shrink or grow the edge, maybe negative 0.5 just to start with. And again, once we make changes, we may also want to change the screen balance just to get something that's a little bit more even. Now the other consideration is what your shot is being composited over. So in this case we are using somewhat of a darker background. So this is looking pretty good and uh, it only took a few steps. Now the clip black is also helpful to get rid of some of the extra stuff that doesn't get keyed completely. So if we turn that up just a little bit, we'll be sure to get rid of any of the extra spill that may have been left over. So that's a pretty good basic key and uh, we'll go ahead and do a little bit of color correction to match our footage to our background. So we'll scroll up here, we can close the key line effect and then we'll choose effect, color correction, hue and saturation. So this way we can bring the saturation of the entire image down. So if we just bring that down, the image won't be as saturated. Then we'll choose effect, color correction, curves. And now let's try to match some of the green tones of our raw footage. There's a lot of red in this particular shot. So what we can do is go to the red channel and then pull some of the red out by bringing it down. So if we click and drag down, we can kind of get rid of the red and introduce a little bit of green. And that's getting pretty close. We also want to play with the contrast. So we'll go back to the RGB and uh, we'll click down in the bottom here and just bring it down. Now the other thing to consider is that we're in sort of a dark alley sort of tunnel and we want the entire image to be a little bit darker. So if we just take the top point here, bring it down, it will actually bring the entire brightness of the image which will allow it to melt with it and blend with the original a lot better. So we can just play with that. Look at that face. 
It's an action face. So again, we'll add a little bit of contrast here. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. One of the cool things about After Effects is that you can move the frame around. So if I just zoom out here, right at 25%, I can just slide it over. And now it looks like he's looking down the hall or down the alley. And then he's running away and he jumps. So we're going to introduce a cool explosion. And we'll be using a kit called Action Essentials 2. And uh, you can find that on Tube Tape. What it is, is a collection of footage and elements that were shot with the purpose of compositing in your live action shots. So all of the elements are actually pre-keyed and very easy to use. So we're going to be using a few of the elements here and uh, we'll uh, take a look at how we can composite them in this particular shot. So here I have a folder called Action Essentials 2 and I've chosen a few elements to use. Now the collection comes with 500 elements but we're just going to be using a couple of them here. Now the first thing we have is a fireball at the camera. So we'll bring that down beneath the Tino footage but above our background. And if we line this up, we can slide it over here. Now the first thing you might notice is we didn't have to do any color keying. The footage automatically has a transparency in the background so it composites right on top of your footage. So we can just uh, line this up, time it so that it looks like he's uh, running from an explosion and uh, there we go. Now we want to tweak a few settings so it blends with the scene a little bit better. So first let's choose effect, color correction, hue and saturation and let's bring the saturation down a little bit. Then we'll choose effect, color correction, curves and we'll turn this up just a bit. We want it to seem like a really bright hot fire that's uh, coming after him. Now one of the other things that you may want to consider doing is playing with the transfer modes of your layers. So right now if I just hide our top layer our footage is set to normal and uh, F4 will uh, toggle those switches. So we can change the transfer mode to screen or add and these are similar to Photoshop transfer modes and they'll just give you a different look when blending the elements. But for now, we'll just go ahead, leave it at normal, and uh, that way it'll just uh, use the settings that the clip has. So we'll go ahead, come back to the project. We have this dirt charge element. We'll bring that out. And that's basically this sort of small explosion with uh, some debris and some bits. And uh, we'll go ahead and stick it somewhere in the middle here. Now, I want to go ahead and color correct it. So we'll bring out the color correction, go down to curves, and uh, we'll just darken it just a bit here. Now we'll also introduce a little bit more green by pulling the red out somewhat. And maybe going down to the blue channel and turning that up also. So that looks pretty good. Now we do have a sharp edge at the bottom. So what we can do is we can come up here to the mask tool, the rectangle, draw a shape around the bottom of this element, and then we have a mask that shows up. We can set the mask to subtract, and now it's pulling out that part of the image. So we could do things like put it next to this door and maybe use the pen tool and draw a shape around the door and exclude this part from the composite. So if we choose subtract, then it'll somewhat look like that explosion is coming from inside of that doorway. So masks are a really powerful tool for, you know, hiding parts of the image and uh, we can get into that another time. But for now, I want to go ahead and feather our mask. So we'll bring the mask control down. Here we have the mask feather. We'll turn that up just a little bit and then we'll move this over. So this is just helps it blend a little bit nicer. And again, we may just bring the overall brightness of the clip down so that it... Uh, matches with our scene. 